This is the video review of the Power Rangers SPD Delta Squad Megazord, and this, surprisingly, is one of my favorite Megazords of all time. I really wasn't expecting to like this guy as much as I do, because he has that um, very generic uh, Scramble City-style uh, combination sequence, like what Transformers G1, Bruticus, and Superion had, where there's a central unit, and then all the other guys form limbs around the central unit. That kind of combination sequence usually is not a very good sign for a Megazord, because Megazords are not the most complex toys around. They don't have lots of posability, they don't have super duper complex transformations, they tend to be very, uh, for the most part, very simple looking uh, robots. They really need to have interesting transformations to work well. Otherwise, they just kind of fall flat a lot of the time. This guy manages to survive the, um, uh, I guess you could say, stigma of his combination sequence. And he survives it very well, because, like I said, he's one of my favorite Megazords of all time. And uh, we'll see how he does it as we go through the review. I'm going to start with the worst and uh, build up to the best of the uh, individual units, and uh, we'll... We'll, we'll see exactly what makes this guy work from there. So first up is the pink one. Now this is my least favorite because it does the least and because it's also the kind of odd man out as far as aesthetics go. Now if you look at it, with the uh, bulbous round tires and then the um, lack of many sharp lines on it, it almost looks like something that you would find from uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And, uh, well, I'm not going to pretend that the other figures here have a very serious, dark, and edgy, um, aesthetic here. And they, they do have kind of a cartoony edge to them. They're not this cartoony. So this one's aesthetics kind of harm it in the eyes, or, um, when compared to the other ones. But by itself, it doesn't look bad. Its gimmick is, uh, the worst of the bunch. This thing pops up and turns around and does nothing because the American version didn't come with the cards that you would insert here for it to do anything. Uh, the idea is that this is like a broadcast board that would tell someone, say like, this guy's guilty or innocent or come out uh, with your hands up or something like that. It's just a broadcast board and interesting idea, not really the most useful thing around. And uh, this guy also has the most simple transformation. Just pull the fist out and that's it. I'll put them off to the side, and we'll move on to the next one. Uh, this is the yellow one. It's quite a bit better than the pink one because it actually has sharp edges on it. As you can see, the um, it's starting to get some sun damage. The white plastic is yellowing quite a bit. Um, I like the way it looks quite a bit, and I really like the gimmick it has where it has this little gun that comes out. Now, the uh, problem I have with the gun is that the uh, stock it's on is a... Uh, very soft or relatively soft rubber plastic so when you turn it, it ends up twisting it and I'm a little bit afraid it's going to break especially because there's some other rubber plastic like this on this set here of mine that already has a crack in it um, but I do like this gun here it actually functions as something and the vehicle mode looks good now to transform this thing the gun here you need to pull it out like this and then flip the hand out the reason you need to pull the gun out is when you push the gun all the way through, it um, sticks out and it pegs into the hand when the hand's in. So you need to push this down to unlock the hand. And that's this arm. Next we're going to look at the first of the uh, really good ones. Now this one on its surface does not look like it would be very good because it's a... Um, well, it doesn't look bad. I like the way it looks. It's a nice looking uh, tractor trailer. The gap here is a bit much. And the, um, I don't like how this spins down, but otherwise, it is quite nice. I like it quite a bit. And it has a really neat gimmick where if you press on this side of, in this area here, it deploys weapons. Uh, it has a gun right here, which, uh, the combined figure can hold. And the gun can hold like this. So he's driving around, like, near, I'm drifting and shooting you. <laughs> and then, uh, there's also a sword blade right here. This is actually the part that I was talking about earlier that cracked. I'll get into that in a little bit when we get to the uh, weapons of the figure. And I do like this thing. It's kind of small, kind of dinky. It has this problem here, and it doesn't turn very much. But it is, it does work pretty well to transform it, fold it up like that. It is pretty simple, but it does make for a nice foot, and it works. It, it, it works pretty well. 
And now we get on to the first of the really good ones. This is the um, Avital jet, and I am surprised by how, how well this pulled itself out, because with um, things like this, it tends to be, it's a, oh hey, we got a foot, let's make it look, let's uh, call it a jet or something like that. Um, and that's what can happen quite easily with um, things, with um, vehicles like this that aren't exactly real world based in any way. But this one pulls it out quite well because it is just a foot with a VTOL engines on it, but it looks like its own, it looks like it's a viable aircraft. It looks like an aircraft that would actually exist. It doesn't just look like a foot, and that works pretty well for me. And it also has quite a bit of detail too, and you have the VTOL engines which can bend all the way around, rotate around. You can uh, maneuver these if you want to. You do get landing gear that goes up, although it's not really useful for it to go up because landing gear here does not go up. And then you have a little hook down here. And just the overall aesthetic of this thing, and has quite a few bits to it, I think is actually quite interesting. Now I will note, I am missing the underside of the uh, VTOL engines. It isn't vital for this, it just ends up forming another accessory in the, um, in the two undersides of the VTOL engines end up forming another accessory in a robot mode. Now transform this, fold this down, fold these down, bend this up, and fold these back. And this is the first one which has a really nice transformation. <clears throat> now we're starting to see how this is starting to pull it out because the arms aren't that great, but the tractor over there was pretty nice. This was really nice, and now we get to the star of the show, the Pat Striker. Or I, I don't know what it was called in the U.S., but the um, Japanese name for this is the Pat Striker. And this thing is uh, its really nice. It's got uh, six wheels. It rolls pretty well. Actually, all of these roll pretty well. I, I should have shown that, but anyway, it rolls pretty well. It's very heavy because it's got batteries. Um, <clears throat> it just feels nice. Now it has a little gimmick here where if you rotate up uh, part of the spoiler, you get some little posable arms. That's kind of the um, what the figure does that all of the other guys do. Everyone has, every one of these has at least a kind of utility, although that's definitely not really a utility. They try to have a utility, and this guy has one. And I, this one is it's kind of weird, but I like it. And uh, now for the lights and sounds, press this in. And now we can start getting into the really interesting stuff of this guy. Because I, normally I hate lights and sounds in a figure because the sounds are usually kind of annoying, too loud, and then it's just not worth uh, eventually corroding the insides of a figure with a battery acid if you forget to take the batteries out. Sound boxes are usually too much of a hassle for me. Um, but this guy does it really well. And the reason why is because he has a shock sensor. I did not press a button. I um, hit him kind of hard. You can do that anywhere on the guy and it will happen. You can even uh, roll him. Um, I hit the button here, sorry. You can even roll him and then he'll make the uh, engine revving sound. So that's kind of interesting. You also get the um, sounds and uh, lights from pressing this. Lights up down there too. I am not a fan of that sound, but it is neat how the, um, if you watch under here, how it does sort of a, uh, in the underglow, like what you see in a lot of, uh, race car games, the kind of thing that you see it and you know it has no practical use, but it looks kind of cool. He has that, and I think that's kind of neat. And, um, that's about it for this mode, but he does, um, have some pretty interesting things in the transformation, and then... When you finally get to the uh, robot mode, it, it gets kind of neat what this guy does. Transform him, you will rotate these down. Then you will um, pop this out. And uh, sometimes when you're transforming him, it will activate the shock sensor. And this toy is a smart toy. There's a little tab right here, a little button right here. And when those mate, it will know it's in robot mode and start doing different sounds. Um, but before we get to that... One thing that I did not know about first, and I've not seen anyone review the figure, talk about this, but if you just bend it over like this, what happens is when you, um, I'm going to turn off the sounds for now, what happens is when you uh, hook up an arm and try to turn it, it bends back like this. 
what you need to do to combat that, and this is when I first started really liking the figure because this is neat how this works, but there are little black tabs back here that you pull out, and these will end up clipping around the midsection there. Pull this back down and bring this together, and there you go. This is a very solid connection. And at first when I uh, saw that, I was like, oh, it doesn't work very well. I'm going to have to leave this up. I was really disappointed. I saw the detail they put into making sure the figure held together well. And I was damn impressed. Now, anyway, to um, continue on, turn on the electronics for the combination. This is a necessity because of how the shock sensor works. When I plug this in, um, plug in, it sounds like it's metal clashing together as it's combining and that is really neat because it uh, incorporates the uh, shock and the sounds of the shock sensors into the combination sequence without having to try it just does it and that is really neat that is the first really neat thing about uh, the uh, shock sensor in it and that sound effect that sound effect is a very generalized sound effect. It fits in a lot of contexts, and all of those are contexts which this guy can easily, you can easily picture this guy in the context. Like, he's jumping around and then he's smashing on the ground. Or he's walking, he's going. Or he's taking heavy fire and going boom, boom, boom. He reacts appropriately to almost anything you have him do. Or he's going, I'm gonna punch you and lose my arm and break. He didn't break, he just came apart. And it, that sound effect can be kind of annoying, but it, that sound effect can get really annoying. But when you want to use it to help with the, help playing with this figure, it works really well. And it's a really nice sound effect. And that is part of the reason why I really like this guy because the sound design on him is really good, and the way it implements the sound is also really good. And I'm sure you've noticed this before, but... <clears throat> you see this uh, strip right here? There's an LED in here, and as you can see, it causes these T-sections here to light up. I really like how... I really like how the central unit adds functionality to the lower units. Now you don't get anything on the arms, but you do get things on the legs, and I really like that. Now to continue on with the sound effects, you get a really neat, I'm powering up my, I'm firing my laser sound, then. <coughs> that sound effect right there is like either a sword hitting or it's like, oh, we're all finally combined together and our power is centralizing here and we're going to wail our siren type sound. And so I don't tend to like the sounds from the buttons from the button here as much as the other sounds, but the sounds do work well. I do like them pretty well, well enough to tolerate them for the uh, shock sensor sound. And now I want to talk about the aesthetics of this guy a bit, because if you look at him from the front, he is a relatively nice looking Megazord. He's not, he's by far not the best. He's, he doesn't. Hold a candle to the Zeo Megazord, for example, which looks glorious. But he does look pretty good. From the side, he looks good. And from the back, he looks good. You get the back of the car right here. You get the uh, sides of the front of the car. You get um, a pretty okay uh, back of this leg here. The only problem with the back here is this leg right here. But otherwise, it looks really good from the back. From the side here, it looks back. And from the front here, it looks back. This design puts a lot of thought into making the figure just look good, and I appreciate that. And now, for the articulation. Each arm can rotate around 360, and the legs can move forward and back. So even though you can't necessarily balance him like this, he is a very mobile uh, Megazord, which makes him just a bit less boring than another Megazord, which might only be able to move its arms around, which is kind of a, a serious limitation on uh, imagine to play with a figure. for To not be able to move the legs does limit the kind of situations you can picture, because here you can picture... I'm a... Oh, that didn't work. You can picture... I'm a kicking you! And it works, because the sound effects also so tie into it. And it's just 
they put a lot of effort into making this guy actually fun. And now we can start getting into some of the smaller details of the guy like, pull this out and you get his gun. Pull this out and you get the blade of his sword. Put the gun into this hand. <clears throat> then pull this out, turn it around. You get a wrist mounted gun or you get a, and there is a crack on this blade here that is unfortunate, or you get a wrist mounted sword. Or you can pull this off and you get a really nice sword. And this sword is really nice, because um, with a lot of Megazords, either the sword is a separate accessory that it only applies to the robot mode, meaning it's just off to the side when he's not all together and holding it, or it stores and it's a um, blocky mess with only a little tiny blade. No, this guy, the sword stores on him very well, and the sword is nice, long, intimidating, and well-shaped. So the weapon design on this guy is really neat. Now if I had the yeah, handcuffs that I mentioned earlier, or the uh, bottom of the VTOL rockets here, he would have yet another accessory. Now it's kind of a silly accessory, but it's there. It's just two loops that hook together in the middle to form handcuffs that you put around a um, monster to capture it. And that is really not neat, but it's it completes the package, and I just like that. This guy just has so many... He, this is why this figure is good. He does lots of tiny things really well. That's why this figure is good. Just that since alone is all I need to know about why this figure is good. And that is in contrast to, say, um, another figure that I've reviewed very recently, Gokaio, who does one big thing very poorly. Actually, Gokaio and this guy have a lot in common. Like, they even have a... Uh, trailer guy here, but this guy does the trailer right, because with Gokaio, you have to unplug the uh, tractor part, and then plug it onto the bottom. This guy, you just fold it up. Um, so yeah, this guy is great. He's just really great. They put a lot of thought into every aspect of this guy. Even though the transformation is simple, it just works well. He's great. I highly recommend this guy. So, I've recently started a Facebook channel. Um, you can see the link in the uh, video description down below. I will soon be announcing a contest there. If you are interested in that, check out the uh, my Facebook channel or my Facebook page and uh, give it a like. I review Power Rangers, Transformers, Macross figures, lots of stuff like that. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.